the way that you judge if somebody's really truly saved is what is their attitude towards the truth. I'm a Christian, but I reject the King James Bible only position. Um, I'm a Christian, but I'm not dispensational. I'm a Christian, but I believe Christians would go through the time of Jacob's trouble and could lose their salvation. And, and you know, But I'm still a Christian. Sorry. Nope. Nope. I'm a Christian, but I don't have to change my life. Well, then you're not taking the yoke of the Lord upon you. You're not a bondservant. You do what you want with your life. But you've believed, and that's all it takes. Your own belief. It's really something, isn't it? Again, do we see science? No. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Not to come unto me, all ye that are convinced by the mighty arguments of my saints down there, proving scientifically that I exist. Uh-uh. Are you laboring? Are you heavy laden? Come to me, I'll give you rest. And he will, and he does. Luke chapter 16. Old saying is very, very good, and that is, a man can't be saved until he knows he's lost. Absolutely. Luke chapter 16, verse 27. You have the rich man in hell, and he sees Lazarus over in Abraham's bosom. This is talking about the Old Testament here. Before Jesus died on the cross, now when Jesus, you know, now that the blood is there, you go right to heaven when you die. You don't have to go down into, you know, the earth down there to wait for the resurrection. You don't need to do that. Or wait for Jesus to die on the cross, the perfect redemption. Luke chapter 16, verse 27. This is the rich man speaking here. It says, Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Lazarus, in other words. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. It's a prayer of a lost relative that went to hell. They're praying, they're saying, please, God, I want them to be saved. I don't want them coming here. Verse 29, Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. At the time the New Testament wasn't written, Abraham says, They have Moses and the prophets, they have the Old Testament. The Word of God. He doesn't say, well, you know, there's a lot of scientific proof out there that will point people to God. The Bible. They have the law, the Ten Commandments, to convict them that they are sinners, that they need to get saved. Verse 30, And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. They need to see scientific proof. And he said unto the, him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Exactly. You can show people scientific proof and waste your time. Because if they're sinners not wanting to be saved, you aren't going to convince them of anything. Turn back to Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10 verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. In the time of Jacob's trouble, there's no longer going to be any atheism. It will be true Luciferianism, which is exactly what atheism is. did a video on that. People that are atheists, predominantly, I mean, there's some that might have just never heard the gospel yet, but... Those that have heard the gospel, those that mock the gospel, hate the Bible, they're Luciferians. That's all that they are. They are Satan worshipers. But you see, at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, the mystery of God is going to be finished. They're actually going to believe. I believe that they're actually going to be able to see God. They're going to know that God is real. Scientific proof, you know. Turn to Revelation chapter 16. What happens when they see God? <clears throat> well, towards the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, you have the outpouring of the vials of wrath. Let's see what happens when these people are seeing God and they know God is real. They know that He exists. 
Revelation chapter 16, verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of, fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another uh, out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. All right. <clears throat> is there any doubt that this stuff is supernatural? When these events occur, there will be no doubt. None. And again, you know, let me kick another little thing while I'm at it here. You get to all these people that are into uh, Reformed theology, and they'll try to tell you, and Catholicism. Catholicism and Reformed theology are just, you know, pretty much the same thing. But uh, <clears throat> anybody that's Reformed theology, uh, scratch them, don't even listen to them. But they'll tell you that all these events of Revelation happened in the past. Really? All the water on earth turned to blood? Men had to mark the beast and, and they had a noisome sore and things like that? Well, that's symbolic. <laughs> Just of the devil. Wicked, stinking people. Absolutely disgusting. But the atheists, they say, we need to see scientific proof. There it is. The mystery of God's finished. They understand that God's real. They can see Him, I believe. And God's pouring out supernatural miracles upon the earth that you can't explain away with science. Well, it's global warming. It's climate changers. No, no. He's doing miracles. <clears throat> Verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Now look at this. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. They know that God is real, and they hate him. Scientifically proven to them that God is real, and they still hate him. Verse 10, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. That's where we're going to end it. That's the whole issue, brethren. They don't want to repent of their deeds. They don't like you coming along and uh, talking about righteousness and temperance and judgment to come. They can't stand that. And so they will sidetrack you and they will say, Does, don't some of your own apologists and your, your own Bible there, doesn't it say that you're to give an answer to every man? Hey, I'm just asking for some scientific proof that your Bible is true and that God is real. Don't fall for it for one second. Are you a sinner? I reject the book. Then go to hell. Simple as that. Well, but 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 I, I need if you could just show me show me some proof, if I just had a little bit of proof, then I could believe in God. No, no proof. Are you a sinner? Do you have uh, heavy labor? Are you depressed? Do you have problems in life? Then Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Are you willing to have the yoke of the Lord put around your neck? Oh, that's so demeaning. That's so terrible. Oh, I can't believe such a terrible picture to these African slaves being chained up by the hands and they got the yoke around their neck and they got, they're being led along. But what if you were being led along by the Lord? I don't mind having His yoke upon me. I don't mind it when the Lord says, Hey, son, I don't want you drinking that. Don't look at that, please. Don't eat that. Because you see, when I listen to my Heavenly Father, and He tells me don't do that, and I listen, my life gets better. 
I like his yoke to be around my neck. I like the restraint. So, oh, that's, that's just so demeaning and terrible. Okay, go to hell. <laughs> Simple as that. Well, I just need proof. You're not going to get any proof. You're a sinner. You don't come to the Lord His way and say, I know I'm a sinner. Then you go to hell. It's very simple. Extremely simple. Uh, you don't need to come up with all kinds of proof and study science and study creation and evolution and this all the debate back and forth and, and whatever else. And, and textual criticism and all that stuff, that stuff is secondary. It all goes back to the very simple thing. Are you a sinner? That's what we preach to the lost. And if they reject that, it's on them. You've done your job as a Christian. We are to go out and to preach righteousness, temperance, judgment to come. And that's why they hate us too, by the way. Or the uh, spoil sports, the uh, party poopers, the goody two shoes, the narrow minded, bigoted whatevers, because we judge their sins. They come out and they say, Look, we're so advanced now. We have sodomite marriage, gay marriage, you know, LGBT. We're so, we're so cool. And, and we, we just, you know, anybody can use any bathroom that they want to, and you can dress however you want to. And perversion is, is wonderful. And I often think to myself, you know, these, these sex perverts out there, these dirty, filthy sex perverts, is there a level that's going too far with sex perversion? I mean, is there something that they would consider to be wrong and immoral and filthy? See? And the answer to that is no. If they're honest, they'd have to say no. Because a man raping a child or something like that, well, he's just, that's his way of expressing love for the child, you know? See, what's the level that you say, okay, this, that's going too far? When you get into the mindset of there should be no boundaries, there should be no limitations. But we as Christians have to be there to say, hey, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You're going to stand before a holy, righteous God someday, atheist, and if you are not saved, if you haven't put your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and, and had a changed life that comes as a result of true conversion, His yoke is put upon you and you learn of Him. If that yoke isn't there, if you're not a bondservant of Jesus Christ, if He isn't telling you what to do, if there has not been any change there. And you see that all the time with these atheists too, by the way. I was raised in church, I prayed the prayer, I was a Christian, but now I'm not anymore. Well, according to some of the brethren, the easy believers and people, they say that, well, they were... They're saved. They'll be in heaven because they at one time believed. doesn't matter that they're totally wicked now and they hate God. doesn't matter because they believed. They made a profession that they are saved and therefore they're saved. No change life necessary, just a profession. doesn't work. So, just wanted to do this little study here quickly just to show Christians out there, don't get sidetracked by this atheistic thing of, I need to see proof. And if you could just show me some proof, if I just saw some proof that the Bible was real and some scientific evidence, you have to have scientific evidence, you know, because I need to be able to test God. I need to be able to bring God into the laboratory and sit him down and say, you know, okay, now I have some questions for you, okay? Now, if you answer these questions correctly, then I'll accept your plan of salvation. No, 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 no. You're a filthy sinner, atheist. That's what we preach to the atheists. You're a sinner. You're going to be judged. If you die in your sins, you're going to go to hell and God is going to burn you forever and laugh at you. Read Proverbs chapter 1. He will mock when your terror comes. That's what the Bible teaches. Let's stay focused, brethren. We have to judge sin. That's one of the reasons that we're here on this earth. We shouldn't just say, well, you know, whatever people want to do, just kind of let things fall apart and whatever else. Nope. We need to judge sin. Don't worry about trying to lead people to the Lord with scientific proof. It's about sin. And if they reject that, if they say, oh, I'm not a sinner, I reject your book, you, you haven't proved, go on to somebody else. Okay? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.